A short message in the light of eternity. <laughs> Some of you laughed, others didn't. I see everyone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want to share this because this, is, this has been on my heart this week, and um, it was more confirmation even after I talked to, to Mike and, and about, you know, this is a church that, that gives, and they, they give out of, of, out of their, their hearts. They give from their hearts, and, and uh, you know, the one thing that, that we understand about Jesus is that he gave. He gave his all. He gave everything he had. Why? Because, because he loved us, you know? And when you love someone, then it's not an issue to give. So I want to just, just shortly talk about love because it has a lot to do with the youth coming up here because it takes a group of people to um, take them and you got to love on the kids. Amen? Not that you're not lovable, but you know, I mean, it, it takes that kind of love. It takes that kind of compassion. And that's the kind of compassion and love that Jesus showed towards us. And, and I know this is probably something that you've heard before, but it's, it's amazing how we can forget some things. Amen? So um, let's just go before the Lord in prayer, and then we'll get into his word, and then we'll allow him to, to have his way. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that, that your word is Jesus himself, and Jesus sets the captives free. Father, set us free tonight. Set us free tonight in our unbelief. Set us free tonight in our, in our doubting. Set us free tonight in, in things that, that we need to be free of, Lord. Father, we sometimes think that we're free, but then we realize that we're not. So, Father, we want to walk out of here more free than when we came in. We bind up legalistic spirits. We bind up those things that, that try to hinder us from receiving your word. Father, we have hearts that are receptive. They will receive this word. You've given us eyes to see and ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us tonight. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you would, to Luke. The book of Luke uh, and the 10th and the chapter. And um, we, we get into a parable that we've probably heard before. Obviously, and hopefully we've read it before. Uh, we probably have a pretty good understanding of it, but I believe it's important that we hear it again. It's the parable of the Good Samaritan. And uh, we start in verse 25, and it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, and he's testing Jesus. I feel good about that, because Jesus was tested too. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So what am I saying? I'm saying, don't, don't fret if you get tested. You're in good company. Jesus was tested also. And he stood up and he tested him saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said, and he said to him, Well, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? And he goes on to say, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and, with, and your neighbor as yourself with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. In other words, loving them as you. And then Jesus goes on to say, and he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. Who wants to live? Amen. I looked up that word in the Greek, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but that word live actually means to live an abundant life here on earth. Amen. Amen. A life that's, that's free, a life that is living in abundance. If you do those things, you will have an abundant life. I want an abundant life. Come on. And I, one of my favorite scriptures, and I've shared this before, is John 10.10. 10. Jesus came to give us life and a life more abundantly. And so there's times in my life and maybe even in your own life where you might have to question yourself, is, is this life that I'm living right now, the things that I'm doing right now, is this the abundance that you've called for in my life? I mean, we, we, should, we should be aware of that. Jesus has called us to live an abundant life. Now, that doesn't mean stuff and things. That means a life full of joy. 
But I'm going to tell you what, it's hard to have joy when you wake up in the middle of the night and you've got chest pains, like Pastor Franz said, because you can't pay your mortgage. That's not an abundant life. Jesus desires for us to have an abundant life. And then we, we, we know the rest of the story, but he goes on to say, but, but he wanted to justify himself. Now, this is the lawyer. That sounds typical. Any lawyers in here? We love you. Hallelujah. We love all the lawyers. Hallelujah. Praise God. There are, there are good ones. There are good ones. But you know what happens? They get bound up in law. That's what happens. And that's what Jesus is saying here. He's saying to this lawyer, basically, you're, you're bound up in, 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 in law. What you need to be is free. You need to be free. You need to operate free. What's freedom? Operating in grace yeah. towards others. So many people like grace in their own life, but they don't give grace. Oh, come on. oh man. That'll preach. You know, we, we talk about receiving grace all the time from God, but I think we start preaching on the fact that we need to start giving some grace. Hmm. Then it goes on to say this. See, I got so, it flipped the page. <laughs> but it's so true, grace. I mean, I've seen people, it's like, man, they just get bound up. and They, they try to be so legalistic. Listen, I want to be free from legalism. And three of you do too. Well, let's go, let's go have fun together. Amen? But he wanted to say this to justify himself. And who is my neighbor? So in other words, he's saying, well, who? You're talking about be good to your neighbor, love your neighbor as, as yourself, basically. Who, who is this neighbor? Then here, here's, what, here's what I find funny is that we have to have an understanding of our neighbor. So Jesus says this parable. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically, there's a parable that Jesus begins to speak. It's a man that's, that's traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he's down this road, and on the way, he gets, he, thieves jump him, they, they take his clothes, they beat him up, they steal him, and leave him half dead. Okay, so the first man that comes along is a priest of the law, because that's who they were at that time. He comes by. Sees the man, nothing I can do for him, continues to walk by. The side of the road. On the side of the road, leaves him. Next is a Levite. What were Levites? They were the worshipers. Oh, you should, the worshipers should have compassion. Nope. In fact, this man walks on the other side of the road to avoid it like he doesn't even see him. Who comes along? A Samaritan. Now, this man was, was a Jew because he came from Jerusalem. He was a Jew that was lying there, they're half dead, and it's a Samaritan, the ones they called dogs. They looked at them as heathens. And this, this man that, that wasn't even liked by, by Jews comes and helps this man, bandages his wounds, takes care of him, takes him to a hotel, stays with him a night, takes care of him, leaves him, tells the innkeeper, here, continue to take care of him, I'm going to... I, I'll pay for my, what I've expended right now, I'll pay, but on my way back, any more expenditures needed for this man, I'm going to pay for them. Come on. Come on. Now, this is a parable. Jesus want us, wanted us to know something about this, and we go on down in, into to verse 37. Well, after, in verse 36, he says, so which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him? Who fell among the thieves? Well, of course we know the Samaritan was. And then it go, he goes on to say, and he said to him, Who showed mercy on him? Then Jesus answered and said, Go and do likewise. We are the ones that he's speaking to. Go and do likewise. So I begin to think about it. And really, who is our neighbor? Anyone, anyone that happens in our path that needs someone who needs listening to? Listen, I remember some of the greatest words Dr. Leon told me when I first started pastoring. Because you know, you'd have people come up and have, they have these needs and they, they, they would talk to you and you had other people that, and you have only so much time in a day. But he said, you know what? The truth is, people really just want a little bit of your time. Just a hello. 
just a hi, just a handshake, just a, a pat on the back. So I, I said, okay, I think you're right. I started at the end of the service, what I started doing at that time, at the end of the service, Pastor Fran would come up, she would conclude the service, and I would head for the front door. And as every person left, I would be able to greet them, shake their hand, hug on them, love on them. And can I tell you what? Everything just began to, to just, it was like a bed of roses. All of those little problems that they thought were so big, all they wanted to do was just say, I want to be loved. I want to be loved. See, there's something about just loving on people. When we came down here, well, it had that up there earlier, but our, our motto that God had given us was doing life together. You know, the body of Christ is supposed to be the body of Christ that does the things that Christ did. The parables that he taught about where to live those out in our own lives. In James, it says that we're to be not only a hearer of the word, but we're to be a doer of the word also. And in other words, these men, this priest, this Levite, they heard the word, but they didn't do it. We're doers of the word, aren't we? This is a church of doers. Amen. It shows in their giving. It shows in their response to, to needs of, of people that, you know, of course, it's, it's, it's Mike's brother, but we, I mean... It's another mission somewhere. Hallelujah. You sow into that. Our brother that, that played the bass tonight, he comes up to me and says, hey, listen, there, there's something going on in our church at the end of the, mo at the month. We invite you and your people to come. There, there's a, I'll, I'll share it with you when I get the information. But it's on, it's on like the 30th of, of, of July. And I said, yeah. See, our desire is to be a part of this city. Amen? This county, this area, this region. I mean, I, I, can, I, I can think big, and I don't even think as big as God. I'm trying. But the truth is, I see this whole state. Come on. Coming into unity. God didn't send us down here just so we could have plentiful sunshine and a lot of rain every day. <laughs> no, nobody told us about that part, but... Uh, <laughs> but I, I know where they, they get the fact that out of 352 days, there's like 300 days of sunshine. Because even though it rains, it's still sun shining. I have, I have literally been showered on and the sun was just beaming on me. <laughs> I mean, where does this rain come from? <laughs> from heaven above, hallelujah. It's an abundance, amen. But we, we are for the church, Amen. We, we need to do, and we've said it at the beginning, this is what we're going to do. In the six-month transition stuff, things are starting to, starting to gel now. Amen? It's time. Are you ready? It's time. I believe it is. But we got to do what, what the Word of God says. Whoever happens to be in our path with a need, someone who needs a compliment, someone who needs encouragement, someone who needs just a little of our time, someone who, who feels lonely, Someone that needs advice. Amen? Just advice. The way we can show ourselves to be good neighbors is endless. I have been thoroughly taken back and blessed. Um, because you know that my wife's birthday is a week before mine, basically. And I had mine last week or whenever it was. And uh, the response to the gifts... And the giving was overwhelming. Uh, I'm playing a new guitar tonight because of the giving of the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, it, it's, it's an awesome thing. We have um, been here now going on seven months. We've lived in two homes. Both the homes that we've been in, my wife has felt a need to remodel. <laughs> And as a good husband, I say, okay, honey, what, whatever you want, yeah. And all the birthday money that went to Pastor Fran just was sewn into 
the house that we're in now, so graciously allowed for us to be there by the weavers. Amen. Amen? And it, 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 it's never ending. It's never ending. And then I look at the youth and, and, and the response that, that was given to the youth and, and, and the leaders of the youth that, that took their time out to take the youth. Hallelujah. That, that giving spirit is, is prevalent in this church. And I am overwhelmed. And, and my message tonight, and I'm not going to go on much further, but love makes a way. Yeah. Love makes a way. And I'm going to tell you what, love makes a way and love keeps healthy relationships. Come on. Turn with me in your Bibles to John 13. John 13, like I said, not much longer in the light of eternity. Fewer and fewer are laughing now. As a pastor, I like to test you. I'm just seeing. I can do that, you know. Um, John 13, verse 1, it's the washing of the disciples' feet. We're all very familiar with that story, hopefully. And it goes on to say this. Um, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that, that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to be to world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Love them to the end. Love them to the end. How many of us have family members that we have a hard time loving them till the end of Thanksgiving Day? <laughs> only, to, only to realize that Christmas is on its way next month. I like that. I think you all understand what I'm talking about. But here's Jesus living his life as God in human form, realizing that his whole objective was to love on us. He loved on us before we were even born. He loved on us before we were even in our mother's womb. He loved on us from the very beginning of time. And he's been loving on us ever since. Everything that you've done that, that was just off the wall, not the charts, I don't even want to hear anything about it. I'm teasing. I don't, really. But you know, he's loved you through it. Every time, has loved you through it. Because I look at my life, he's loved me through it every single time. Jump on over to verse 6. It says, then he came to, to say, he began to, he, he began to get up from the table, just to paraphrase, he began to get up at the table, he put, he girded himself, he got, he got the washcloth, he got the bowl, and he was preparing himself to wash the disciples' feet. Verse 6, then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing you, what I am doing you, do not understand. You do not understand. What am I doing? You do not understand now. But you will know after this. In other words, right now, Peter, you don't have a revelation of this. But you will have an understanding of it. And then he goes on to say in verse 7. Then Jesus said to him, what am I do what I'm doing? Then verse 8, Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Wow. You know, there's a lot of theologi theological explanations for this. But here's what I'm going to say in this matter. Because I really felt this is what God had told me this week. It's about healthy relationships. Relationships are two-sided. Yeah, They're not single-sided. That's not a healthy relationship. A healthy relationship says that I desire to do this for you. Because my heart is for you. The other side of that relationship says the same thing. What Peter was saying to Jesus was this. You don't need to wash my feet. But Jesus was saying, you don't understand why I have to do this. Because I want to show you what a healthy relationship's about. A healthy relationship says, I will wash your feet no matter who I am. 
See, he'd already had the revelation of who he was, the Son of God. He had this revelation, and he didn't think that he was worthy to have his feet washed by him. But the truth is, Jesus says, I have to do this because I've got to show you a healthy relationship. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's when a husband and wife even come together. And even when we do marriage counseling, or I do pre-marriage counseling, you know, and we've all heard this, but marriages aren't 50-50. Hello? Marriages aren't 50-50. Marriages are 100% on both sides. You can't expect your wife to do something if you wouldn't do it also. Amen. That's all right. That's all right. Because it goes the same way. I wouldn't expect, I wouldn't, I would expect if I were to do it, my wife would do it also. Now, I don't ask her to mow the grass. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. I don't think she has, but, but she would. You know? She has asked me to wash the dishes, though. <laughs> and, fold, and fold the clothes. And... Yeah. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> the truth is, the relationship's 100% both ways. It does, it's, not, it's not lopsided. She, she would do it, but I, I'm not going to make her do that. But the truth is, it's not about mowing grass. It's not about, it's about sharing. What I have is hers. What hers is mine. There's no division there. Amen? And it's about healthy relationships. Healthy relationships take place when you do things for one another. One-sided relationships are not healthy. It leads to resentment and bitterness. Jesus knew that he had to teach Peter this because if it was only one-sided, it would lead to resentment and bitterness. Not only should we do things for each other, we should actually need to do things for each other. Does that make sense? Did I need to say that again? Not only should we do things for each other, we actually need to do things for one another. We need to do it. It's not because it just has to be done. You know, my wife likes surprises. She likes to be surprised. And I look back and I think there's probably a lot of times where I could have been better at that. You know what I mean? And I think, you know what? I'm going to work on that. And sometimes we have things in our lives that we need to work on. Listen, we're all human. We all have fallen short. But we can do it. Why? Because that's who we are. We're children of God and we love. Amen. Amen. So giving does not always have to be responsive to just a desperate need. We don't just give because somebody needs something and is in a desperate need. Giving encourages people to make them feel loved. Everyone needs to feel love no matter what someone else has or does not have. Can I tell you what, there are times where Pastor Fred and I have been in a situation in our lives and we have learned to live by faith because that's who we are. We're people of faith. Amen? We learn to live by faith. When you learn to live by faith, you're, you're not crying on your shoulder about stuff. You know, you're not whining to people and saying, I don't have this. I'm poor, pitiful me, blah, 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 blah. Listen, there, 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 there's no power in sympathy. It's weak. It's only, it's only from the enemy. We are, we are compassionate, but sympathy never healed anybody. Okay, so we don't go around saying, and if you, let me just say this, if you tend to make yourself in that way where you don't seem like you ever need anything, it's amazing people don't ever give you anything. It shouldn't be that way. Because relationships should be two-sided. Are you seeing where I'm coming from? And I think that it's very important that we have an understanding that just because we see people with maybe stuff or they look like they don't need a thing, it doesn't mean that they don't need encouragement, that they don't need a helping hand, that they don't need something. You know, 
Longboat Key, you come down here and you look at Longboat Key and you're thinking, man, awesome. That would really be a cool place to live, you know? And, and those people look like they have it all. They got it all. Man, I've, I've followed cars that, that uh, were more than houses in cost. But you know what? They still need. They need love. They need compassion. They need someone to sow kindness. Why am I saying this? Because I really feel in my heart that God has given us this city. And when I say that, it does not only include the ones that are impoverished and in great need. I believe that God has given this city to us and other churches as we combine together. And I'm going to tell you what, there is great need on Longboat Key, Siesta Key, all of those areas where it looks like everybody's got everything they need. Some of those houses are extremely empty. No God, no Jesus, no love. I'm going to tell you what, that's what we do. So we're going to take that treasure hunting team and we're going to go to Longbow Key. <laughs> If the Lord would tell us. I just want to share this in your heart because I see great hearts of giving in this church. And I believe that if we continue to walk in what God has given us, which is an abundance of joy, peace, and love, because those are the fruits of the Spirit, amen, gentleness, meekness, kindness, I believe that we will see great things. I like this saying that I... I I picked up on it. It says, become a blessing and you will never run out of resources. Amen. Become a blessing and you will never run out of resources. Humble yourself and be willing to do small things that may have a huge impact. Remember, sometimes it's the little things that make a huge impact into people's lives. Galatians 6.10, New Living Translation says, Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. So, indifference makes an excuse, but love makes a way. Amen. We have lovers in here, don't we? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We're lovers of Jesus, Amen. which makes us rich in the things that people need. Amen. And I believe that we're going to pour out into others your workplace, school, wherever you go. I mean, there's not a, rarely a time when my wife and, and family go out to a restaurant and a conversation opens up. Who are you? What do you do? What, what's going on in your life? You know what I'm saying? Just the other day, a young lady, you know, she wasn't young, but uh, a lady that worked over at a restaurant over here. We got to talking to her and she was, you know, Talked about Jesus, religion, and so on and so forth. But we got to share into her life. Amen? We invited her to church. And you know what? Those people are going to start coming in. Amen. And I am so excited because I say we need to get ready. We need to get ready. Amen? Amen? So love makes a way. And um, I really believe that the love that you had here in the church for the youth made a way for them to go. Amen? Yep. And just like, I had no idea what Pastor Tony was sharing on, but I, I knew we were talking, uh, you know, about the youth tonight. And when I got up, I said, you know, you know, being in a relationship doesn't mean just being there. It means being involved. Amen? And so I just want to ask Jess and Chris and Denise and... Um, Tony and Christina, and then the youth just to come up and give you guys the mic and just let them hear how they were involved. And, you know, because you're being there for them. You're giving, even though you maybe weren't there, you were involved in what they did. Amen? And, you know, it won't be long, but we just want them to share. And um, I know that a couple of them have some things on their heart, um, even for praying for certain people tonight. We just want to give them the opportunity. Are you guys okay with that? Is everybody good? Okay. You all good? All right. So Chris, Jess, you guys want to come on up? Um, Denise? 
Anthony, Christina. These, come on, these are the leaders that took 20 teams, 25 teams. Amen. Um, first off, I just want to say thank you guys so much for everything, every prayer, every every bit of love, we felt it while we were on that trip. I mean, it, I can't even say the words that, you know, those kids just, just, just the transformation from the moment we left this campus to the moment we got there and came back, it was just a 180. I mean, it was just, I don't know. I, I know that, I think every one of us here can say that uh, watching the kids go go after Christ after with everything in them was probably the best part of that trip. So, I mean, every minute of that time was what was per, was where we where it was supposed to be at. So, thank you guys so much I, again. I can't say it enough. I know none of us could say it enough. So, uh, I'm just going to pass that on to Jessica. Are we, are we asking the teens to come up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can all, can all the teens that, that were okay. on, on the trip can they come up? Um, I'm gonna wait and see what they share, but then I might come back. But um, just I, on the screen when they showed the slides, there was words that were written, and they on the back there was the, probably about close to 3,000 kids that were at this Collide um, conference, and they had about five or six boards in the back. Come on, guys. Yeah. Um, and so anytime they got healed or anytime that they got freed of something, anytime God touched them, they were supposed to go right on the board. And I don't know if you were able to see some of them, but kids were healed of suicide thoughts. Kids were healed of, of uh, family situations. I mean, we could go down the list. We took pictures of it because we were just so excited. So all kinds of thing, great things happened. But I'm going to let them talk, and I might come back. Yeah, sure. No, first off, I just want to thank you guys so much for sewing in. I mean, you, they just completely changed. Like, literally, some of the, some of the people in our group, like, went in. You, like, their, their hair was in their eyes, and they just looked dark. And after, like, the altar calls and stuff, they would just, like, they looked like a whole new person. And that's because of you guys. Like, that's because of you getting them there. And so I just want to thank you for that. But I honestly went um, because to be a chaperone, to help out, and... I didn't think that God would really encounter me. I wasn't really expecting it. I mean, you know, it was just another youth conference. It was just another, like, conference. And I figured, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. And little did I know that God really encountered me. Um, he really brought freedom to places I never knew he could have. Um, I was dealing with just, like, the hurt of, like, being offended because of someone else. I've seen people like in ministry come against my family and like it, it was just hurting me and I, I didn't accept it. Like I didn't accept like or receive or make knowledge that I was hurt. And uh, one of the altar calls was for people in ministry that have been hurt or wounded um, that they've just felt like, God, why am I here for five people? Like, why am I keep doing this when I don't see any difference? And he was like, you know what? You don't know if there's, if that Billy Graham is out of those five kids, you know? And so I really, God really like encountered me and just like showed me like that I'm doing this for a whole different reason than what I thought. And he like kind of showed me my heart and I saw it and he was like, Christina, you've let your heart turn into a piece of glass. And so when anyone rubs up against you, they, they hurt. You hurt them. And he was like, you cut them every time you rub up against them because you haven't allowed me to heal you. And so that night, I really got complete healing of any hurt or offense. And I felt so free from it. So I just want to thank you guys so much. <laughs> okay. Um, I also want to say thank you because... You guys provided so much I was able to go, which really blessed me a lot. Um, and for me on the youth trip, what really touched me was I was able to really get poured into. And I got God really downloaded a lot of things in my heart. And I didn't exactly realize while we were on the trip everything that downloaded until the week after. 
this week, God's just been showing me and revealing different things that I didn't realize. But um, one of the things that I did that really stood out in my mind was um, Damon Thompson was speaking, and um, he was talking about running after God, and he just said the word run. And I see these people just start running around the service, and I was like, that's awesome. Those people are awesome, you know. And, and Damon Thompson's like, if you feel led to run, just go ahead. And all of a sudden, I felt like this tug. I'm like, okay. I was like, I don't know if I want to run, but Miss Denise had already moved her legs. She knew some of us were about to run, so I'm like, okay. So I just started running, and it was interesting because you start running around the first, and I'm like, okay, okay, this is good. And then I run around again. I'm like, wow, because you feel like God really showed me freedom through it when you're just running around service, which was really cool. And um, when you're saying run, a picture popped in my head from a paper I have on my wall. I've had it up for about a year now of when Sarah and Ian did the kids' church. We did hot seat in the kids' church. So they brought me in. They're like, okay, Lizzie, we're going to do you now. And um, I remembered a word that Ian had, Gordon had said, and he said that he just saw me running. And he said, endurance, you're not getting tired. And I'm like, I don't know. It's just God really revealed to me that I was getting spiritually tired because I've been running so long through the kids' church and ministering and stuff. And so it was it really a chance for me to be able to be poured into a lot and that um, I was going to be able to run more and more. So that was really probably the biggest thing for me. So... <laughs> Well, first of all, I want to thank all of you guys here at the church for giving. And all the chaperones over there, thank you guys for taking your time to take us. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much. And uh, God really touched me this time. Um, there was a word, Damien Thompson, I was mentioned before. Uh, one of his uh, words was, praise and worship should not be an on and off switch. It should not turn off in an instant and you'd be done with it. No. So he's like, he gave an example of a fireplace, uh, newer fireplaces, they're on and off switches. You can just turn them right on, boom, there's a fire. Then you just turn it right off, poof, it's gone. He's like, he's like praise and worship should not be like that. You know, all the kids these days that like it, where you can just turn on a light, there it is. And he's like, you know, that's right. You know, praise and worship, it's hard to start up at first, but then once you get that fire going, it's not going to stop for a while. You got to keep that burning. And so uh, that night, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go all out. I went all out that night. Oh. <laughs> um, it, well, it was definitely a fun youth trip. It was very awesome. I feel like I've gotten closer to God, and I've gotten closer to some of my friends, and um, I feel m very more free and than I was before I went on the youth trip, and I feel like I know God a lot better, and it was, it was an awesome youth trip. This kid, he's uh, he's part of our family. Trying to take the mic. <laughs> Watch him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, I think that this was really good, and um, I think that uh, the services were great. And they were life changing for a lot of people, but I really don't think the services are what changed. Me, per se, if you're going to say there's a change. But uh, I really do think it was like these people around me and how I, I saw these people. Because I'm going to say, I'm going to be honest with you guys, uh, on the way up there, <laughs> we're standing there in the dark, in the rain, eating pizza outside. And I'm like, oh, God, what are we doing here? <laughs> are you for real? I'm like... You know, I think there's some picnic benches with some shade or something to stop the rain. 
And I'm like, are you? Yeah, it was just drizzling. Thank you. Excuse me. Yeah, drizzling. But uh, yeah, no, this was this was in uh, Georgia. This was not Florida, so I was not expecting it. Is that right? But um, no, it was really good because I saw how some of these kids who wouldn't give me the time of day before, literally when I met some of them, would just stare at me. <laughs> but uh, I was like, what am I coming into, goodness gracious? This is like Pandora. <laughs> but uh, they, by the end of this trip, they're, they're prophesying over each other, and I'm watching them pray for each other. People that wouldn't even talk to each other before are now believing the best in each other and seeing the best in each other. And I, I really do think that was the change. And, uh, and I, I'd just like to say that the, uh, the chaperones deserve as much, uh, as much thanks as they can get. I'm telling you, this, this crew right here, I'd take them like on a zombie apocalypse. Chris, Chris would never stop driving. Jess would never stop like keeping everybody calm, and Denise would never stop cooking for the people. Woo! So, and then and then Christina, we'd have to pray for her a couple. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just kidding. But uh, no, there was a really good group of kids, really good group of chaperones. The right people went. Yeah. It wasn't just a, a youth vacation. It was really a, a youth encounter with them. And um, I do think that, I think it was worth it. I think that's what, I think that's what it was. I think it was worth it. So uh, thank you everyone who sent us and prayed for us. And uh, uh, last but not least, I think it should be noted that if my future wife is watching on YouTube, that I will never make you cut the grass. I saw it, I saw it on the Flintstones one time and it made me cringe. I was like five years old, but thank you guys. Okay, I do not know what to say, but there is one thing I can say. When I was in my room and uh, I was with Mr. Chris and Micah and Ethan and Jonathan, and I was like, I never seen the side of these people. They were sitting around watching Duck Dynasty, and I'm like, okay, can I go down to the other room? Because down in the other room, they're watching Scared and Afraid down there, and it is amazing. And when I walked into Clyde, there was this person right be besides me, and when we walked in, he just dropped to the ground. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh. We love you, Joel. <laughs> you guys are amazing, seriously. I know you keep hearing thank you, thank you, thank you, but seriously, thank you for not only giving money, but for praying for us. I know a lot of you guys are praying for us. And I know, like, everybody here felt it. And thank you to the leaders, because just for your patience and for your guidance on the whole trip. And just every day, you guys are always there for us. But I could go on and on and on, like, all night about everything that God did for me. Um, I collide and just through this year, but I'm just going to share... I think two of the biggest ones, because you guys don't want to be here all night. <laughs> um, I should be totally transparent and just say that I felt a lot before, and I didn't realize it until I got to Collide that I was um, somewhat of a hypocrite, actually, because when I was home, and I passed your friend, God, it was funny that you were talking about, you know, time well spent with God. Well, I wasn't doing that, and I knew it. I was accountable. And I still wasn't doing it. And, you know, sometimes I wanted to do it, and then sometimes I didn't really want to, so I didn't do it. And, you know, and then I would come to church, and I would act like, you know, because I would feel, you know, I was going off of that feeling of, oh, God's here, so I'm going to worship, and I'm going to be all holy. And, and everybody, you know, bought it, I guess. And so I was like, well, you know, that was kind of where I was at, and I was kind of tired of it. So when I got to Collide, he really just like awaken that love again. 
like I had heard that, you know, awaken first love, and I was like, oh, yeah, but, you know, I don't really remember my first love, so, you know, I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing, but he really did bring just total transformation. Um, there was one, I don't know if you guys could read those, they kind of went by real fast, but um, they told us to write stuff on the board, and a lot of people were writing for physical healings, but I didn't have anything real physical happen to me there. It was all, like, deep in my spirit, and so the one that went up and said, generational curses have been broken, well, that was me. <laughs> First, thank you, Jesus. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was uh, right before, it was the day we went to the first, um, what was it called? Service of Collide. First service of Collide. And, um, and we went to Starbucks. Hallelujah. And we're getting some coffee. And so I was just sitting there. And that's like the timeline that I can pinpoint, like when I felt this. And I felt a shift in my spirit. And I felt really heavy and real depressed. And I knew that it wasn't of God. And I knew, because I've never really struggled with depression in the past or anything, but I knew it wasn't mine. I knew it wasn't, you know, of God and it wasn't for me, but I didn't know how to shake it. And I was trying to explain to Serena, and I don't think I did a very good job. <laughs> I was just like, I feel heavy, you know, and I don't know what this is. And she's like, okay. And she's, you know, trying to, trying to help. And it just, I couldn't do anything to get rid of it. And so we got to collide and, um, you know, I was just worshiping. I pushed through and I just worshiped. It was amazing. I ran around the sanctuary with Lizzie and it was great, but it was still there. Like I could still feel it. So I was, you know, just pushing through. They had an altar call. I went down in the altar and I just, I just fell. I was just, you know, just kneeling and I just started crying. And I didn't realize, how, like, because anybody here who knows me, and she can attest to this, I do not cry. Um, hardly ever, and especially not in public. I'm not, you know, and like, and I'd feel bad when we'd go to the movies, and I'd just be sitting there, and all my friends are crying, and I'm the only one who's sitting here with dry eyes. I'm like, I kind of feel, like, left out here, but I can't make myself cry right now, so it's going to be different, but... um. But I, was just, I just started crying, and I felt like, you know, and I was asking God, like, why, why was I feeling this today? And he's like, you know, you're feeling, you know, I was kind of letting you feel almost um, this depression because it's a generational curse that's been placed upon you, and you haven't really totally recognized it, but throughout your entire family line, there have been these things that people have opened doors to and led into their lives, and it's been passed down. It's like baggage. It just keeps getting passed to the next person, and it's all been dropped on you. And he let me feel that because I, and then I remembered, as soon as he said that, I remembered a family member, hearing a story of my family member that has um, passed away, since passed away, but I just remember that they had struggled with depression, like really bad, like really bad depression and that's what I was feeling and so you know and I remembered these other things that kept coming up I was like oh and I remember this story and this person let this in and I was like oh my goodness this explains so much and it was just it was so healing and I went as soon as as soon as the service was done I was like Jesse I need to talk to you and she was so busy so I was just lay I was just laying because when we got to the hotel room I couldn't even walk I was just laying there and she finally finally got a, a spare moment and I was just like, I just, you know, just let it all out. Just told her everything. And she, we did some, um, some of the Sozo tools. They're, those are amazing. Seriously, if you have not done them, they're amazing. And they really helped. She really helped. And, uh, and I want to do it as a family, too, with our family. I already told my parents because it's, it's so freeing. So just thank you for praying for that. And it's still, it's still going on. I'm still, you know, that love is still, you know, being built, that fire. And I just, thank you, Jesus. I'm just so happy. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd still really like to thank all the leaders and the chaperones for doing all that stuff. And Miss Denise for cooking for us, for all that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was, like, just really, I don't know, <laughs> um, um, when David Thompson was speaking and he was like, you know, when the enemy is trying to attack you and you hear God, he's whispering, mighty, mighty. And 
um, and that just totally, like, I was just like, whoa, you know? Yeah, I was, yeah. It was just really good, and, like, you go there this way, and you, come, and you come back changed. You don't stay that way. And you have this fire, just a fire burning in you. So... So I've had a lot of time to think about what I'm going to share. Being the last person, it's nice, but it's weird. <laughs> um, so going into it, I was kind of dealing with what Cecily was going through, like just going through the motions, and it was really easy to get caught up in life and miss what God was doing. And um, I remember... I was just missing him so much, and I was like, God, I feel so distant from you, and it would be easy when you get to church because everybody's there, and everybody's in the presence. It's just easy to be in the presence. But when you go home, and you're by yourself. Like, where are you? And um, I remember Damon Thompson, he said this word, and he was saying, you know, when you are trying to protect yourself from the flu, you're going to give your... To, you get a flu shot, and with the flu shot, they give you just a little bit of amount of the flu so your flesh can overtake it. And I remember hearing that, and I remember thinking, like, God, I've only been given, like, I've only been getting so much of you to where my flesh can overtake you, and then I can just go on throughout the day. Like, with the whole thing with fire, like, when it's easy to turn it on, you can turn it on, and when, when you're in the grocery store and it's hard, you turn it off. And I remember just, just going through that, and God was just revealing through me, like, you no, know, you need to constantly be burning, like, constantly just be in my presence, and... It was just powerful, and then I remember one night just being on the floor, just laying down on the floor because it was just so peaceful, and I remember Rick Pino was playing, and all of a sudden he just bust out into the song Pioneer, and that song really hit me, hit my heart because there was a long, no, God still does it, but there was a season in my life where God would just constantly, every day I would wake up, he would just say, I see you as a pioneer, and he would just sing that song over me, and it was like when he sang that, it was bringing back to remembrance of what he had done, and it was just powerful, it was really powerful, but, so I just want to thank you guys, and just sewing into us, and just listening to us too. <laughs> The, on the trip, obviously, we did outdoors with them, and we had a lot of bonding time with them and fun, um, but that before Chris and I left, we weren't even sure why, but we felt like God told us to share our testimonies with them before Collide started, and I was like, God, I think that a lot of them know, but okay, so we kind of separated the guys. Tony and Chris took the guys, and I, Denise and I, Christina took the girls, and I shared my testimony with them, and again, there's, there's children that youth that aren't here with us tonight, but so I didn't know a few of them and couldn't wait to meet them. But um, in, my, in my sharing of my testimony, I didn't know that some of them had walked through some things that I had walked through. And the next day they had an altar call and like, it was kind of like an opening. Like I asked them just to let God go where they wanted to go, where he wanted to go in their hearts, you know, and let him take what he wanted to take from you and let him heal you this time. And um, so the... They had an altar call for some things that people had been through, and they came down. And be, um, when I was sharing my testimony, it was also I threw in about how in Sozo, how I had this one memory, and how I was, you know, I could share my testimony, but I was still stuck in that. I'm, I'm sure you guys remember a year or two ago when I shared that, but um, without going into too much details. But Jesus came into the room, and he led me out of that, and, and he closed the door, so I, and I was with him, so I didn't have to remember that memory anymore. And so... Um, the girls, there was a couple that the Lord completely healed. He completely and only healed them, and, and you could see the light in their face change. And, you could, and they were coming and talking to me about it and, and, and just being more open. And then not only that, but one of them said she asked Jesus to come and lead her out of that situation that she remembered that, w that she didn't feel pleasant in. And, and God just completely wrapped it up and healed. So... To me, that was like one of my favorite highlights, but there was so much we could go on and on and just watching them and, and families, things that they, they came with family things and that family, you know, it changed and their families being restored in their, in their own way they're carrying it. And God just did huge things. And I can't thank you guys enough for your support and your prayer 
And I mean, Chris and I thought of you and all of us thought of you guys so many times. We're like, if they could just see what they did, if they could just see how they invested, you know, um, and just see all of these kids, not only ours, but thousands of kids just worshiping God and, and, and ours just running hard, you know, after him and getting closer to him. So thank you guys so much. We can't thank you enough. It was beautiful. Come on. I just, um, real quick, wait a minute, I don't know if that's yours. <laughs> that's good. Jess. Yeah. That one's Tony's. Tony's. T Anthony. This one's your dad's. That's Christina's. That's, Mr. that's Anthony's. And that one's Miss Denise's. Just a little something just to thank him because, you know, it is a, a big thing. Um, you know, I just, I'm so blessed. You know, some of them aren't speaking, but, you know, I know that their lives were touched. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what? Can you just yes, you're next. <laughs> um, and so I'm so grateful and thankful for that because, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I look at it like, honestly, if God just touched one of them, but how much more that he did. And I even believe that there was things that took place there that they don't even know yet. Amen. That's what I'm speaking over. I'm speaking that there were things imparted into their spirit in that conference that will be awakened later in their lifetime. Amen. And, um, and so I, really I do just my, you know, my kids, say it like it is, you know, Christina and Anthony, the, you know, I'll just be honest with Christina was like, really, Miss Denise is going to cook. Is she a good cook, mom? Cause I, <laughs> she called me up, mom. I said, how's the food? Oh my gosh, mom, Miss Denise cooks just like we do. She's such a good cook. You know, and she was like, we're going to eat where we're going to, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in the thoughts and the things, but I just so proud of them for going in faith and, and going and going to the meetings and not just going, praise God, they got to whitewater raft and to do those things, but to, to really go far to his face. Amen. And I just want to thank you because you really did with the transition this year and everything going on the church, you really did support them. Big time. Amen. And so, and then I'm believing next year that there's going to be more kids from Victory that are going to go. And those of you who have never been able to go on a youth trip that you feel God's called you to go and chaperone, that God's going to open the door for that. Amen. And so I just want to personally thank Jess and Chris. My kids just spoke so highly of you. They just, they, they could not, I, I don't think they could have spoke any highly more of a couple that would pour into the kids' lives, the time that you gave and your passion and just your compassion for them and just your love for Christ, amen, that just poured into every one of them. Um, thank you so much for that. And Denise and Christina, Denise, my daughter thinks you are like the bomb, amen. And she's like, I love Miss Denise. Mom, did you know Miss Denise was that cool? And just so, and I want to thank the parents that allowed their children to go, amen, for entrusting them. And so, um, I don't know, you know, I know one thing is, I know, Sylvia, that um, last week, if you were in the service, and I know it's quarter after nine, and so if you have to go, we understand, but last week, if you were here, um, the presence of God just kind of fell during worship and the Holy Spirit we just felt uh I think I don't remember exactly how it went but we kind of had an altar call for to believe for the impossible amen for in, for impossibles to become possibles amen and you know I don't I can't right now share in full with you but I'm telling you we had a huge impossible this week become a possible Amen. I mean, 
just what we are believing and standing for. And I'm believing that we're going to have a night to where we're going to be able to share those things. But one of the things, Sylvia, you weren't here, um, but one of the things that I really felt the Holy Spirit say when um, Ellen came up for prayer, she came up to pray for your eyesight. And I just felt like the Holy Spirit say that your your eyesight was going to come almost like, and, and I can't remember exactly. Do you remember, Ellen, exactly? It was like um, as you walked in faith, like almost like um, exercising your faith. As you continue to exercise your faith in, um, in believing that, it was going to be a gradual, but by the time the, the end of this year was going to come, that you were going to see things you never saw before. Amen? And I even saw, like, you, like, in exercising, I saw, like, these giant, like, flashcards with things that you could look at and see, and then they were dim, but then they became clearer and clearer, and that you could tell what they were. Well, the youth felt led tonight to pray for you. And we just wanted to know if that would be okay. Would that be okay? Amen. So would you rather they come to you or would you rather come up here? Yeah, the, the kids can come to you. Yeah. Good? Okay, you can come do that on. too. But I, I just want to share this too. As, as I was sitting there, the Lord reminded me of... Um, go ahead, you guys can come on down. Re reminded me of the, the prophet Samuel. And it's, it was said of Samuel that he ministered before the Lord even as a child... And sometimes I remember going to Morningstar meeting and um, they had prophetic places where these teams were, that would minister to you. And they had these teams with these, these great speakers and so on and so forth. And they sent me to a, a team that was just kids. And I'm like, really? Come on. Come on. This is all you I got, remember. God? I mean, you know. <laughs> and, and the Lord said, remember Samuel. He Come ministered on. before for me, even as a child. And that's what I saw here. And some of them I know are, aren't children, but the very fact is, uh, you know, their faith is strong. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Their, their faith is strong, and it's just been boosted up by what they've seen and, and what they've encountered. And, and, and through God and, and through relationships, and we know there's, there's power in unity. And so as they, they come before Sylvia with laying on our hands, we will stand with them with their faith. And I'm going to tell you what, we are going to see miraculous healing Amen. in her the eyes in become possible. Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, um, and Sylvia's faith is strong. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. And so That's we're right. going to attach, they're going to attach their faith to hers, and you're going to attach your faith. Amen. And we're going to believe, why not? Yeah. Why not blind eyes see? Why That's not right. miracles? Amen. Why not Sylvia? Yeah. yeah. Why not now? Amen. Come on. Come on. Why don't you just come gather around Sylvia? They're all around you. <laughs>